One technology that never ceases to amaze me is privacy glass. I don't know what it is about it exactly, but every time I see it, I say to myself, whether out loud or silently, wow, that's cool. And at the heart of privacy glass is a super cool transparent conductive silver film called Fleck Clear. And the interesting applications where it can be used doesn't stop at privacy glass. It can also be used for IR blocking, a transparent EMI noise shield, and a whole lot more. Let's get into the details. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Chris Burkett from TDK and I investigate the what, where, and how of TDK's transparent conductive AG film called Fleck Clear. We examine the benefits that Fleck Clear brings to the table when it comes to transparency, surface resistance, and haze. We also chat about how Fleck Clear compares to other similar solutions on the market today and how you can utilize Fleck Clear in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TDK. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. So nice to talk to you again. Okay, so we're talking about Fleck Clear, TDK's AG film today. But Chris, before we get started, for my audience who may not know, what exactly is an ITO? So ITO has historically been the leader in transparent film technology. It's been around for quite a long time. So ITO stands for indium tin oxide and it is the most common transparent conductive film in use today. It can be applied to a, a plastic carrier or put on a glass substrate, typically applied via a vapor deposition or a sputtering process. TDK uses a sputtering process in our ITO films. It is still the technology that all other transparent films are compared to. And it's been around, as I said, forever since the 1980s in commercialized applications. And although there's some other technologies that are out there that may be lesser cost, things such as aluminum zinc oxide, AZO, as it's also known as, cannot be etched into fine patterns and is susceptible to moisture ingression, unlike ITO. It also exhibits some reflection in the IR spectrum, but it gives a little bit, especially at the high end of the near infrared range. Some of the key applications they're used for today are transparent electrodes for OLEDs on the anode side, liquid crystal displays, electroluminescent and plasma displays used for solar panels. So it's the transparent electrode for photovoltaic cells. It's also used on touch screens, both for capacitive touch technologies and also for EMI protection for displays and so forth. And used as an EMI coating for various substrates. Okay, so Chris, are there any downsides to ITO? Unfortunately, yes. So ITO requires a heat treatment or an annealing process to achieve many of its optical and electrical properties. So what does that do? It actually changes the crystalline structure. So it goes from an amorphous material into a crystalline material. And that heat treatment, though, also makes it more brittle. And therefore, bending especially can be an issue. And it adds another process, so it's going to add cost but it's important. So looking at the surface resistance change when it's in its amorphous state versus when it's been crystallized, the resistance goes from 250 ohms per square down to 100 ohms per square. And this is just an example for one of the materials that we have. There's also a change in the transparency percentage and some of the other characteristics, but it's really seen in the surface resistivity. As you can see at the bottom left, it's done at an elevated temperature around 140 C, and it takes 90 minutes to do this. So again, that's adding process time and a new process. So it, all it does is it adds additional cost to the end product. So Chris, what about Fleck Clear? How are these conductive films different? So Fleck Clear, also known as AG film or AG stack film, is a silver-based material rather than an indium tin oxide-based material. However, like ITO, it is thin, it is flexible, it's transparent, and it's electrically conductive. It's been in production for many years, but it's not as known as much as our ITO product. It uses a similar PET film carrier that we vacuum 
sputter with this silver alloy, and it's only to the micron thickness. It has very high optical transparency, up to around 88% when it's at a 10 to 12 ohm per square surface resistance. But that includes the loss of the PET film, which is anywhere from 4 to 5% on its own. It comes in two available surface resistivities, both 4 ohm and 10 ohm. It comes in two thicknesses, which is predicated on the thickness of the carrier film. So 50 micron PET or 125 micron PET. It's got two package formats, so it comes on a roll. Or you can obtain samples or even for production, A4 size sheets, which are roughly 8 inches by 12 inches. And these are available in Mauser currently. Two standard roll widths, 500 millimeters and 1.5 meters wide. As we manufacture these in a 1.5 meter wide, so we can cut them to standard widths, depending on the customer needs. AG film does not require that additional heat treatment to achieve its optical and electrical properties. And the metallization layer can be etched for patterning, but this is something that TDK does not do. So how do ITO films and AG stacked films compare? Looking at the attached chart, we can see that the thicknesses are the same because they both use that pet carrier film. Light transmittance of standard ITO film product is slightly higher, 3% higher. Haze are relatively the same, and the B star value is lower for the ITO film than that of the AG stack film. However, you're talking about an eight times difference in surface resistivity. So we're at 100 ohms per square for the ITO film, and we're at 12 ohms per square on the AG stack film. So if we were able to reduce the ITO film surface resistance down to 12 ohms, the B value would be much, much greater than the four value for the AG stack film. And finally, the coefficient of shielding is 0.96 for the ITO film and 0.79 for the AG stack film. One other point is that the B star value is part of the CIE lab color coordinates. So when comparing the two available AG values, surface resistance values, with the 125 micron PET substrates, we have a type G, which just means it's 12 ohms per square, and type D, which is 4 ohms per square. Obviously, with the higher surface resistance, the coating of the AG alloy, the AG stacked film material, is thinner, so you get a higher light transmittance. So it's 86% for the 12 ohm material, and it's 82% for the 4 ohm material. Haze values are equivalent, and the B value now between the 12 ohm and 4 ohm are 4 and 5, respectively. Surface roughness is the same. Water vapor transmission rate is the same, and the work function is also the same. And the work function is how much energy is required for that material to lose one of its electrons. So 4.7 is pretty much on par with what pure silver is in a 111 crystal lattice structure. So we talk about the 4 and 12 ohm values being standard. Other values are possible, but it depends on the application. And we use 12 ohms in this case because that's the maximum value of the standard 10 ohm material. Okay, so can you explain the stack up of AG film as well? Yes, so on the, the left side, you see the basic stack up. So you've got the carrier film, you've got a protective layer, then you've got the super ingredient, the AG alloy, that, that is the transparent conductive material, and then you've got an additional protective layer on top. But when you look on the right side to the detailed stack up, you've now got an optional protection film that you have to peel away when you're going to use the material. So if it comes on a roll of these A4 size sheets, it's just to protect the surface from getting cut scratches and things like that, dust, to get onto the transparent surface. It's then followed up with a hard coat layer that helps protect the PET film carrier. Then we do a hard coat on top of that. That hard coat has another purpose, though. It does the optical adjustment of this stack up. Then a protective layer. Then we come with the silver alloy material. And finally, that top protective layer. But that's also a conductive layer. So you are getting to the silver alloy conductive layer, but it's got an ultra-thin protective layer that's also conductive on top of it. Okay, so... Chris, what do you think are the biggest benefits of AG film? One is the aforementioned heat treatment crystallization process that's eliminated, that's needed for the ITO. From what I'm able to see out in the market today, it's the leading transparency versus surface resistance versus haze and color shift technology that is out there. 
it's got a very low B star value change as we decrease surface resistance, meaning that we're putting a thicker layer of this AG alloy onto the carrier film. So we target five as, as a maximum. And again, as you go higher than five, you start turning a little bit more yellow or a little bit more brown. So we try to keep that at a minimum and limit our values to a maximum of five. We have a very low haze value and no distortion like you may see with mesh screen structures. So copper mesh or other type of metal materials. Standard etching and laser ablation methods can be used for patterning. So if you want to do a transparent antenna, you can etch that pattern into the film itself or use a laser to incorporate that as you need. It's resistance to many cleaners, chemicals, cleaning agents against leaching and intrusion. It's good to prohibit oxidation. There is a list available. So if that's something that you would be interested in, we can provide that. It's got very high reflectivity, which means that we can put it in high temperature environments and it will reflect the heat back to the source. It's got good EMI suppression properties and can be easily attached to via silver paste or an optically clear adhesive, also known as OCA and other type of materials. Okay, I want to spend a little bit of time here explaining haze. So haze, the best example is when you look at the night sky and you look at the stars, some of them seem to flicker. The little ones will twinkle, twinkle. And as the light comes through the atmosphere, it's scattered. And then when it gets into any particulates or dust particles or anything out in the air, it will scatter that light to the point that you no longer see a point light source. So the atmosphere itself is going to reflect some of that light. And then it's also going to diffract some of the light, but it's also going to scatter it via the atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere will cause scattering, and any particulates in the air will also reflect and scatter more of the light as it comes down to the viewer. And then if there's moisture in the air, that also will cause some distortion to the viewer's eyes. So haze for transparent films also have contributing distortion factors. You know, the surface roughness that I talked about in the table, the finish or the texture is also important. Mirror coatings tend to reflect a lot more of the light. So you're going to get lower transmission and more reflectivity when you're looking at it from the other side of the transparent film. The film and the coating materials also have a big impact. These all impact what the image is seen by the person viewing it as it goes through the film. And additionally, any impurities that are in the manufacturing process within the material also will lead to additional scattering. So looking at the image on the bottom right, the main light source comes in with the thick black line coming into the left side of the transparent film. At this point, there's going to be some reflection. So it's reflected there in blue. There's going to be some scattering due to the surface of that. So there'll be scattering with the red lines. And then when you get into the material, the internal contamination will cause additional scattering. As they continue to the second surface, the backside surface, again, there's another reflection on the main light source, so the black line, there's another blue line reflecting to the left. All those lines, as they get to the second surface, will have additional refraction and scattering from the second surface until you get to the viewer's eyes on the far right. What's not included in this is also that at the second surface, there would be some more of that light reflected back to the left so this is a very simplified version, but it just shows you that there's a lot of components in the stack up that create scattering and distortion and causes haze. I want to take a second here to explain what the B star value is. So within the CIE lab coordinates, there's the L star value, there's an A star value, and there's a B star value. The L value measures the lightness, and it's from pure black, where L is zero. So on the chart or the figure on the right, it's at the very bottom. So when L star value is zero, it is a very black image. And then when you go to L value of 100, now you're in the white range. So now you will see a more white image. The A star value is a measure of the green-red content. So the range is from minus 128 to plus 127. A lot of people just use 128, but it's actually, there are values higher than that. But for the sake of this presentation, when it's a negative value, the light source is more green. And when it's a positive value, the light source is more on the red side. And then finally to the B star value, it also goes from that minus 128 to plus 127. But again, a lot of people just use plus or minus 128. So when the B value is negative, it's more on the blue side. And then when it gets into the positive side, it shifts more to the yellow side. When you go into that yellow, 
it also gets into the browning. So we try to minimize how much yellowing or browning effect that we will allow being introduced by the transparent film. So we, TDK, limit that value of the B-star to five. Chris, I'm curious about that repeated bending aspect you mentioned. Can you talk about that a bit more? Yes. So I talked about the heat treatment process that ITO films need to do their optical properties and their electrical properties. So due to that, there is some embrittlement of the material itself. So resistance changes due to visual cracks being created, which are caused by the bending of the material. So there is a minimum bend radius of 5 to 10 millimeters. So once you're in that range and you get repeated bending, you start to get these micro cracks within the material. And as you continue to bend it more and more, you get more of these micro cracks and they become visually seen and also then change the resistance path and the resistance starts to go up. So in the light blue curve here, it's showing that after around 100 bends, there is a pronounced hockey stick change of the resistance as you continue bending. Whereas for the AG stack film, its minimum bend radius is around five millimeters or maybe even a little bit less. And we're into the tens of thousands of bends at that 10 millimeter bend radius here shown in this chart without any impact on resistance. Okay, so are there any specific things that engineers should keep in mind when it comes to AG film? Well, the first question is always going to be cost comparison, right? So since AG film is, the AG stands for silver, it's going to always be higher priced than ITO. It's a fact. One of the biggest challenges that we have right now is it can only be bent in one axis. So when we're talking about headlight lenses where they have LEDs that now the heat is actually transferred back away from the lens rather than the old traditional halogen lamps or, or even incandescent, the heat was transferred forward so it would melt snow and ice that was on the lens. So we've had multiple requests to put in this AG film on those surfaces and use as a transparent heater to melt any ice and snow that may be on the lens surface. Right now, we can't do it as a solid piece because we can only bend in one axis. So we would have to do something like a Japan flag rising sun pattern where you've got openings and then when you bend it around the concave shape, it then fills in the void and then makes it pretty much 100% coverage. Right now, it's also available on pet film substrate. There's people that would like to see maybe some more robust, more tensile strong materials. But for us, we haven't had any problems and we, we're staying with pet substrates. We are a higher resistance than copper mesh, but we offer a lot better optical properties. And one of the key points is that we've gone through the auto glazing process. So the Gorilla Glass plus Soda Glass glazing, where they sandwich this material in between, we've gone through that and have passed with no problems. However, TDK still does ITO films, but we limit it to around 50 ohms per square. So again, we're talking about that B star value. We don't want too much browning. So Chris, are there any other technologies that compare with AG film? There are a lot of alternative technologies out there that have been in the market for a while. And then there's a lot of new developments coming along. So one of the existing ones is conductive polythiophene or PDOT. They're very flexible. They're very easy to customize the size and shape. They're also made with this continuous thin film process. It's low cost patterning, but they have lesser performance in terms of surface resistance versus transparency. And they are also susceptible to environmental factors such as temperature and humidity and ingression and moisture into the materials. There's another newer material called carbon nanotubes or CNTs. They also offer low-cost patterning. They're also done with a continuous thin film process. They are much more environmentally stable than the PDOT materials. However, they have lower performance than even ITO films in terms of surface resistance versus transparency. Another newer material is silver nanowires. They are very susceptible to environmental factors, and therefore they add an insulation layer to prevent corrosion, but then this can create connection challenges to that. It's got good surface resistance to transparency. And finally, we get into the metal mesh technologies. So these can be printed or they can be etched and you create this metal mesh screen. You can do ultra fine line widths as to not easily be seen. But then when you do this, it adds a lot higher costs because you need a more refined process. And it also adds increased surface resistance. 
but it does have good surface resistance to transparency performance. And as you increase the size of the width of the mesh, you now increase haze and, and distortion in the material itself. So when you put these over like a monitor or a display, you get some distortion of the characters behind it. So Chris, what applications would be a good fit for AG film? We are always looking for new applications. However, some of the more common ones are the AG film being used as a conductive transparent electrode, basically generate an electrical field across it in another layer. It's used with PDLCs or polymer dispersed liquid crystals, which is used in privacy glass. So if you come into a room, it's transparent, you flick a switch, you actually polarize those polymers inside of that material and you create a blocking scheme within the material and it will then go from transparent to opaque or vice versa. You can have it opaque, flick the switch, apply the electrical field across it, and it will go from opaque to clear. It's also used for intensity control. So you can dim the amount of light that goes into either a car or into a room. We've gone through extensive testing with multiple electrochromic materials. And then it's also used for tinting, shading, coloring, and opaqueness. It's also used for OLEDs. It's also used, as I said, electroluminescent and plasma displays, liquid crystal displays, and they're also being used for the top surface or the transparent surface on solar cells. It's used in IR blocking applications, so energy savings, so ZEHs, so zero energy houses and zero energy buildings, CEBs. So they're used on windows, so they block the sun in the summer, so you need to use less air conditioning. It's also used in automotive glass for sunroofs and moonroofs and windshields to keep your car cooler, especially if you have an electrical vehicle. You don't have to run the air conditioning and then deplete more of the battery storage. It's a transparent heating element. We can supply up to 2.6 watts per square inch. We've gone through some automotive applications where it's done on windows, exterior mirrors. I talked a little bit about the headlights and taillights. ADAS cameras, as long as it's not IR type, it can clean the lenses of an ADAS camera. It's used on security cameras, non-IR type. We can clean them in winter conditions. And then also for refrigerators, coolers, freezers, the display windows when you go into a fast food or like a 7-Eleven. We've had transparent antenna applications, both on auto glass and then in wearables. You can put it on the face of a watch or a display. And then we also use them for EMI suppression on monitors and displays and screens. And then they're also an integral part of capacitive touch screens and touch sensors. So I mentioned that privacy glass, so looking on the image on the left, the voltage is on. So in this case, it's transparent. And then when you turn the voltage off on the right side, it goes from that transparent to a opaque. And when you introduce the electrical field, it now polarizes. So you're looking at the end of the polymers within the LCD, and it then goes from the opaque to transparent. And then when you take away the voltage source, it goes back to opaque. All right. So you also mentioned IR blocking for a good application for AG film, right? Can we talk about that a bit more? Yes. So this image is the guy that used to sit next to me at the adjoining office. And I use him as a guinea pig every time I had something to do. So on the image on the left, his arm is in front of the A4 size sheet of AG film. And then when he moves it to the front of his arm, he, you basically disappear. So it's blocking in the near infrared. So in that, let's say 780 nanometer wavelength up to 2500, it's blocking a high content, especially as you get into that 1700 to 2500 nanometer wavelength range. On the left side here is the transmittance value from 300 nanometer wavelength all the way up to 1900. So the visible spectrum is shown there in the color bar. Okay, so going over to the right side, this is the reflectivity. So it's blocking IR, not by absorbing it, but actually reflecting it. It's just going to be the inverse of the transmittance curve on the left side. You're reflecting 80% or roughly 80% of the spectrum energy in that wavelength. So this slide now compares the IR blocking spectral response between ITO and AG film. So when you compare that to the AG stack film, when there's heat involved or you're working with IR problems, the solution has to be AG stack film. And this is one of the leading technologies over all the other alternatives that I mentioned earlier. Okay. So what about AG film for heaters, for defogging and defrosting? What would that look like? So transparent heaters is one of the key applications for our AG film materials. The advantage is, is that since there's no distortion or low haze, 
you can put the heating element closer to the front surface. You don't have to bury it behind the reflector of a mirror. So you can now put it between the reflector and the glass itself, which then helps expedite the defrosting process. So in this example, this is a rather large heater. So it's 550 millimeters by 230 millimeters, which is roughly 22 inches by nine inches. We're only putting 36 watts across this transparent heater. So this is a very low power application. So that's why when you look at the measurement result, going from zero degrees C all the way up to plus 12.5 C, it's 30 minutes. But there's a couple things that are highlighted here. One, it's very uniform heating. Not what you might be familiar with when you turn on the rear defrost of your car window, you get that fish skeleton heating pattern. And that's shown on the right side where you've got heating due to a wire embedded into a glass. You get those lines associated with that. You don't get that with the transparent film. Even at 0.2 watts per square inch, within five minutes, you've already got a five degree C temperature rise. And so when you have applications where you want to use low power, you don't want to run a lot of energy. You just want to keep it warm so you keep it defrosted. So this is the type of applications where this comes in. So this slide is transparent heating elements, but it shows how easily you can control the power per square inch. A rainbow effect on the left side is just using different power levels in each strip as we piece them together. So the same power is applied, but we're controlling it with resistance on the left side, and then just a raw one on the right side to show you the comparison. So yellow being obviously much warmer than the purple or reddish one there on the left side. All right. So... We talk about EMI here on Chalk Talk a lot, and this technology can be used as a transparent EMI noise shield as well, right? Correct. We're targeting displays, monitors, screens, and things like that where you have information behind that might be susceptible to outside EMI noise, but also generating some. So the AG film works in two ways. We talked about reflection on these surfaces. So it's reflecting some of the noise energy and then attenuating it slightly inside, but allowing a lot lower power level to pass through the material itself. So these are working highly on its reflective properties. Down at the bottom, we compare different surface resistance values. So the dash red at the bottom is having no AG film involved. And then we go into the 30 ohm per square that we've done, the 10 ohm per square, and then finally the five ohm per square there in the blue give you the most attenuation. Also, remember that each 20 dB is a factor of 10. So 20 dB of attenuation drops it down to 10%. 40 dB is dropping it down to 1%. 60 dB is dropping it down to one thousandth of what it originally was. On the right side, we're comparing the light transmittance. We could do a good EMI screen, but we don't want to yellow, and we don't want to create more haze, and we don't want to drop the light transmittance. At the 10 ohms per square, it's this 87 to 88%. And then for this experiment, we did 30 ohms per square. And again, it's still at that 87, 88%. Some actual testing we did with CISPR 25 qualification. It was used with a wireless charging Qi system where the fundamental switching frequency is, was around 127 kilohertz. On the left side, there's no AG film included. You can see the fundamental switching frequency there at 127, 130 kilohertz. And the interesting thing that we observed was the second harmonics that were more problematic. So the first spike there, just to the left of the green column and just above the red line, was around 250, 260 kilohertz. So without the AG film, it far exceeded the limit that was allowed even for class four CISPR qualification. When you look at the right side, which has the AG film included, we now drop orders of magnitude, so 20 dB minimum down. And so we are now meeting the class four overall quasi peak limit. And then there's another big drop in energy level of the EMI noise in the 2 to 4 megahertz range. And lastly, when you electrically ground the AG film, it also improves the reduction of that E field that's related to the EMC or the EMI level and also further reduces the amount of EMC within the system. All right. So, Chris, are there any other applications where this technology would be a good fit? We have worked on transparent touchscreens. So you've got a cover glass, then an optically clear adhesive, AG film, then a spacer. So and again, in this case, it's optically clear adhesive, then another conductive layer. 
So that AG stack sandwich over the optically clear adhesive then creates a capacitor and it can be used as a capacitive touchscreen. So we're using it for both touch sensors and touch screens. And then we've got customers for this example, KDDI over in Japan that makes transparent antennas out of our material. Some of the other applications that we've been approached for is greenhouses to block the IR signature so, or to block the heat. So if you've got a greenhouse, if you don't want it to be like a sauna, you can use AG film to reflect some of that IR back out away from going inside because zero energy housing, it's not as hot and humid inside the greenhouse. We've had people talk to us about stage lighting where these spotlights are used and they generate a lot of heat. They can be used to help reduce the touch temperature of those devices. There's military applications where night vision goggles, where you're trying to eliminate the amount of IR in light sources, these may be able to help comply with the ENVIS, the night vision imaging system requirements. Commercial planes, if you've been on a Dreamliner 777, the blue tinting, that's done with an electrochromic material, but it's got to have two layers of conductive film. Well, using some of these other technologies like ITO is not going to reflect the sun. So when you're in the hot desert sitting on the tarmac in Phoenix, like I was yesterday, they tell you to put your window shades down to block the sun. If AG film was applied, it would automatically reflect that heat out away from the plane interior so you wouldn't have to get onto a sweaty plane and then crank up the air conditioning to feel more comfortable. Awesome. Okay. Well, Chris, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, and hopefully we get to do it again in the near future. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TDK. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.